In this video, I'm going to go over counterbalancing. The first thing I'll look at is how to counterbalance different experiment versions and different stimulus sets. So to achieve this, we're going to use two different functions, the math floor function and the math random function, and we'll also be looking at uh, some different if and else uh, statement syntax. In the second part of the video, we're going to look at how to counterbalance the order of two tasks in an experiment. We're going to use the same tools that we used from the first half, but we're going to add a temporary variable trick in order to switch, uh, to switch the values of two variables. So let's go over into Psychopie and get started. So here, oh, I don't need this. Here, um, I have an uh, experiment set up already. So let's imagine that I'm doing a lexical decision task. So I have two um, two tasks here, task A1 and task, uh, sorry, task 1A and task 1B. So in this experiment, I want to have two stimulus sets. So both stimulus sets contain the same words, but with different conditions. And so I want to make sure that I counterbalance these across participants. I don't want one participant to see both stimulus sets. So I've created two loops. So essentially what I want to do is I want to automatically um, turn one loop on or one and one and the other one off each time the experiment runs. So I don't have to do anything manually. I would just upload it online and start running it. And then each time a participant uh, runs the experiment, either stimulus set A will be run or stimulus set B. So the way that I can turn off and on these loops is by setting the n reps. So if n reps is equal to zero, this loop won't run. So in other words, um, this stimulus set A will never be seen by a participant. If it's equal to one, this uh, stimulus set will be seen um, by, by the participant, and each of these four conditions will be run one time. All right, and that goes the same for the other one. So what I've done, uh, I just added this in here, is I've created a variable called nreps a. So by manipulating the value of this variable, I can basically turn this loop on or off. So the way that we're going to do that automatically is by using a random number. So I'm going to create a new routine called randomizer. And I'm going to create some custom code. Now, I want this to run at the very beginning of the experiment. So as soon as a participant loads up the experiment and starts running it, it's going to decide whether they're going to see stimulus set A or stimulus set B. So I want to generate a random number. Uh, well, I want, yeah, I want to generate a random number that can only have uh, two possible outcomes. So I'm going to use uh, the random number, uh, sorry, math.random and math.floor to achieve this. So the first thing, math.random is a function that returns a float, which is just a number with decimal places, between 0 and 1. So that's 0 inclusive, 0, uh, 1 exclusive, which means it will never generate a 1. The maximum value we'll ever generate is 0 0.999 recurring. Now this isn't good enough because there's so many different possible outcomes. So I want to limit uh, the outcome of this random number generation to two possible outcomes. So I want it to be either 0 or 1. So how do I do that? Well, the math floor function basically takes a float or a number with decimal places and removes all of the decimal places and returns the, um, the integer. So it just rounds down to the nearest integer, essentially. So Right now, if I ran this, it would just generate 0 every single time. That doesn't work. What I can do is if I multiply the, the random number generated by this function by 2, I'll create two possible outcomes. So think about it like this. If math random, if math random uh, returns, uh, let's say, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 will get multiplied by 2 and return a 1. If it's anything above uh, 0 0.5, any number at all, 
it will return, for example, 0 0.2, but then math floor will remove whatever the decimal place is. So what this means is if math random returns anything higher than 0 0.5, the outcome is going to be 1. And if it returns anything less than 0 0.5, it's going to be equal to 0. So this is perfect. This means that I'm going to generate a random number that's either 0 or 1 every time this runs. So statistically, 50% of the time it should return a 1, 50% of the time it should return a 0. That's perfect. Now we're going to use an if-else statement to use that random number to assign values to our, um, our nrep values, our nrep variables, sorry. So if random number is equal to 0, I want to run stimulus set A. So nreps, remember this is the name of my variable, nreps A will be equal to 1, and nreps B will be equal to 0. So this means 50% of the time, this loop will be turned on, and this loop will be turned off. Now, because there's only two possible outcomes, I can use an else statement. So if random number doesn't equal 0, it must be equal to 1. And in that case, I want n reps a to be equal to 0 and n reps b to be equal to 1. And I'll close the curly brackets. So what this means is that half the time, stimulus set a will run. The other half of the time, stimulus set b will run. So that's perfect. That's all I need to do. So at the beginning of the experiment, uh, either this will get turned off and this turned on, or vice versa. So that's exactly what we want to happen. Now, this, uh, this logic uh, applies to any number of uh, stimulus sets. So for example, if I now have uh, stimulus set C that I want to include in the experiment, I'll just add this in here. I'll add another loop. And I think I have a stimulus set C here, so I'll just load this. Now I just make this equal to n reps c. I can call this task 1c. So now I have a third loop, and I have that third variable. So if I go back into here, now I want this, um, this to generate three possible outcomes. So I just multiply it by three. That means that it will uh, the outcome, or the va uh, value that's returned uh, for random number will either be 0 or 1 or 2. So I can use that in the same way. So I just add add in my nrep c. So if it's equal to 0, I only want to run uh, stimulus set a. And then now I need to use an if, oh, sorry, else if statement. If So if the random number isn't 0, Maybe the random number is 1. So if it's 1, I only want n reps b to run and n reps a and c to be turned off. And the only other possible outcome is that random number is equal to 2. And in that case, I want n reps a to be equal to 0, n reps b to be equal to 0, and n reps c to be equal to 1. So it would just look, uh, it would look just like this. So now, you know, 33.33% of the time, um, statistically speaking, uh, stimulus, the participants will see stimulus set A, the other 33% of the time it will be stimulus set B, and the other uh, stimulus set C. Fantastic. So now let's go to the second part of the video where I'm going to talk about how to counterbalance the order of two tasks. So now I'll just get rid of... Uh, these loops and so now let's talk about a different scenario so I'm just going to call this task one okay so I'll, let's let's imagine now that I have two different tasks that I want my participants to do I want them to do a lexical decision task with um, no prime and a lexical decision task with a prime. But I want to counterbalance the order that they do uh, these tasks in, just to remove any possible bias of the trial order. So now I have to do something different. 
So I'm going to use the same kind of idea that I did from the first one, but with something extra. So I'm going to add that same randomizer routine at the end. But now, again, I only have two possible outcomes. So I'm going to get rid of, I'm going to change it a little bit. So I only want, I only have two possible outcomes. I want either task one to come first or task two. So I'm going to change this to nreps1 and nreps2. I don't need this else if statement anymore. And this will be 1 and 2, like, like so. OK. Like this. All right, so right now, what this is doing is at the beginning of my experiment, I'm setting the n reps of 1 equal to uh, 1 or, or 0. So this means that either task 1 will run or task 2 will run. But that's not exactly what I want. I want both of them to run, just in different orders. So let's imagine that we're going to pass through this loop twice. On the first pass through, only one of them will run. And on the second pass through, the other one will run. So how can I do that? So I need to add a loop around this whole thing and pass through it twice. I don't need any conditions file for this. Uh, I just want everything in the loop to happen twice. So the first pass through, based on this code, one of these tasks will run. And now the second time through, the same task will run again. But that's not what I want. I want the other task that wasn't run the first time to be run. So in, in other words, if n reps equals 1 the first time, the first pass through, I want it to be equal to 0 the second time through. The same as n reps 2, if it equals one uh, equals 0 the first time through, I want it to equal 1 on the second pass through the loop. OK, that's just that's good. So I need to, in a sense, switch the values of these two variables. Now, one thing that I initially tried to do uh, when I was trying to work this out was I just did this. It was n reps 1 equals n reps 2. And n reps 2, sorry, n reps 2 equals n reps 1. But the problem with this is, is let's say that n reps 2 is equal to 0. This will make n reps 1 equal to 0, and then it will make n reps 2 equal to 0 again. So this doesn't work. This is where we have to use that temporary variable trick. So rather than uh, do it this way, I'll just create a new variable called temp, and I'll say that it's equal to n reps, uh, the value of n reps 1. So if we're passing through the loop the first time and n reps 1 is equal to 1, meaning that we run the first task first, I'm going to make temp equal to 1. Then I make n reps 1 equal to n reps 2. And then n reps 2 gets assigned the value of temp. Right? So this is just a, a way to invert the val or to switch the values of the two variables. So doing this what will happen is at the beginning of the experiment, let's say that task one gets run. So the first time we pass through this loop, it runs task one. When it gets to the randomizer, it switches the values of these two. So the second time through the loop, task two will get run. And again, make sure that I note that I'm doing this at the beginning of the routine. So the routine is placed after the two tasks. So we only end up running this code once one of these tasks has been run. So that's pretty important. So let's actually save this, and uh, I'll sync it to my uh, repository, and we'll run it and make sure that it actually works. So we'll have those reverse the order. So all this is essentially doing is reversing the order of presentation for the second trip through the loop. Looks like it's done. All right. So it looks like we got the prime one first. Not a word. That's a word. OK, and now 
now we're going through the, the second uh, task. So first we had the prime, now we have just the words itself, uh, just the LDT without any prime at all. And if I go back and look inside my um, Excel file, so we'll just delete all this. This uh, trial information is not useful. And so we can see here that, so I've actually labeled these in terms of which task they are inside the conditions file. So if I open up my conditions file here, uh, where is it, counterbalancing? So inside, here I actually labeled which task it is. So this just helps me to identify uh, which, uh, which order the tasks were actually run in. Uh, the other option that we have, um, so this actually looks pretty, it's pretty clear what's happening here, right? I can see that the task twos are appearing above task one, so task two must have been run first. Um, another way to do that is when you're actually setting uh, the variables at the beginning, you can actually record something into the, uh, into the output file. So you can do that doing, using psychojs dot experiment dot add data and we can just say order so in this case um, if random number is equal to zero it's going to run task one first so I can just say uh, task one task two and in the other in the other case it's going to be the opposite so it would be task two, task one. And this will just get printed into my data output file um, in a column that will help me keep track of the order that they were presented in. Again, you can do the same thing. I forgot to mention earlier for the um, counterbalancing of stimulus lists. Uh, so either, um, well, you probably want to do both. You want to make sure that you have uh, the version saved in the conditions file so that you know which one's being run, or and or <laughs> when you're actually doing when you're actually setting uh, which um, version is being uh, being run you should also record it in your data file using uh, this uh, function all right so one thing that we uh, haven't covered that i might get to in in later videos is how to uh, counterbalance uh, more than two tasks because it gets a little bit complicated there but for today uh, what we've done is looking at how to counterbalance, uh, basically, I should say automatically counterbalance um, experiment versions and stimulus lists, as well as the order of two tasks. All right, so thank you very much uh, for listening, and I hope this was helpful. Again, if you have any requests or further questions, please contact me uh, via email. I'd be happy to respond. And uh, again, the more questions and requests that I get from you, the more videos I can make. And I'm sure that if one person's wondering about something, another person has a similar question. So again, thanks for your input and uh, stay safe. Thank you.